Whether you're investing for immediate passive income, steady retirement income, or simply just scaling an investment portfolio to ultimately achieve financial freedom, the ultimate, I mean the golden rule of investing should apply. Never, I repeat, never lose money. So in today's video, I have four prime dividend ETFs that investors of all walks of investment strategies should certainly not be shrugging off or ignoring. Now enough talking, let's dive right in. As mentioned, today we're going to run through four high-quality, top-notch dividend ETFs that will not only help you build a rock-solid investment portfolio foundation, but of course reward you lavishly in dividends for years and hopefully decades to come. But before we actually cover these four dividend ETFs, I want to take a quick moment or two to just cover the sheer importance of building a portfolio foundation, as I often refer to it. And while on the topic, why getting your hands on a dividend ETF as opposed to just, say, a broad market ETF may be a very wise move for every investor. So first, let's cover the why as to why we all should be investing into an exchange-traded fund or at least ultimately starting off with doing so. And the answer, it's simple. An exchange-traded fund allows an investor to invest into a basket of stocks as opposed to, say, just one individual stock. It's really like paying for the price of one and getting dozens in return. Not to mention, you never really have to worry about picking the best of the best dividend stocks or even losing Losing sleep if, say, the market wavers, because ETFs grant you that added measure of financial security and emotional ease, and knowing that if one of those stocks that you've picked actually plummets, well, you have dozens upon dozens more that are going to really offset those losses and just keep you net positive. Now, as for the YA dividend ETF over, say, your broader market ETFs, easy. Money in your pocket today is always better than money in your pocket tomorrow, meaning those dividend distributions that you're going to be receiving along the way from these ETFs can certainly help you cover expenses, or you can simply reinvest them accordingly to generate even more wealth for yourself over the longer period of time. And for what it's worth, depending on the market, dividends then should always be reinvested, but more on that in a later video. Finally, dividend ETFs in general, as we will come to see in today's dividend ETF, picks will gift you all with stability as they often don't get rocked too much by market volatility. Well, at least not as much as some of the broader market funds that are out there. Now, with all of that said, let's go ahead and get to our first dividend ETF. It's the State Street Global Advisors S&P Dividend ETF, ticker symbol SDY, which if we jump right on over to the State Street site to the fund's overview page, we're going to find ourselves reviewing an ETF that seeks to provide investment results that before all the fees and expenses corresponds, generally speaking, to the total return and performance of the S&P high yield dividend arrest index. That means before a stock is essentially within this ETF, a company would have had to consistently increase its dividend for at least 20 consecutive years, according to their criteria here listed on the site. And moreover, a stock's weighting within the fund is determined by a stock's dividend yield. Now, diving a little bit deeper here into the fund's characteristics, we can see SDY tops out over 74 million in regards to a weighted market cap and deals in 121 total holdings. Now, let's go ahead and continue to scroll down here to find out more. We can see from the fund's allocation that it really will be a safer fund with likely less volatility and also less of a return just given the 21.77% of its holdings being in industrials, another 21.68% being in consumer staples before spreading into the financial sector, utilities, materials, and healthcare. All really making for a risk adverse investor's dream to which we then come to discover SDY's top 10 holdings range from 3M and Realty Income to IBM, Target, Southern Company, Kenview, Kimberly Clark, T. Rowe Price, which perhaps is the riskiest bet among the 10 here. And then we have Con Edison and Medtronic, which then all begs the question, how well does this ETF actually perform? Well, given it was created back in 2005, we can actually go back more than a decade with SDY. But we're just going to look at the last 10 years alone with a $10,000 investment. Of course, we're going to do that all pre-tax and pre-expenses here. We'd now be sitting on $23,549.97. Not too shabby, but but also not the strongest ROI on the list today. Nonetheless, I do want you to take note of the dividend yield year coming in reliably at 2.7%, as well as the expense ratio that's just at 0.35%, meaning you're only actually gonna pay $35 per $10,000 invested into SDY. Now, as mentioned, we do 
have some stronger returning funds to discuss today. So let's now talk about a Vanguard dividend ETF favorite, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, ticker symbol VYM. Now, when it comes to Vanguard, the brokerage that I personally use, I do want to give them some credit and have you take note that they stayed true to their mission statement long before other brokerages, which was to provide investors quality opportunities for the lowest possible fee. That's why I went with Vanguard in the first place, but we'll table that for now. And I want to go ahead now and cover VYM on Vanguard's site, where right off the bat, we see this low expense ratio coming in at just 0.06%, meaning you're only ever going to pay $6 per $10,000 invested annually. But let's continue to scroll down here to get to the fund summary in greater detail. And as we can see, VYM seeks to track the performance of the FTSE High Dividend Yield Index by way of measuring investment returns of common stock companies characterized by their higher than average dividend yields. And we can also see in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, the fund even rates a less risky yet profitable fund, so more positive insights to come. Now, if we continue to scroll on down to VYM's portfolio composition, we're going to find that the fund is in the medium market cap range, similar to the previous ETF, yet with way more holdings within the fund, as we can see a total of 452 holdings. Breaking them all down here, we're going to first discover the fund's largest sectors are again on the safer side here with the exception of the financials, actually making up almost 20% worth of the ETF, meaning it's likely going to return a little bit more than SDY. But we see here consumer staples then make up 13% worth of VYM, followed by healthcare and industrial sector investments that both roughly come in at 12% worth of the fund. And to get a little bit more detailed with the holdings, we can find the fund's top 10 holdings breaking down to ExxonMobil, JP Morgan, J&J, Procter & Gamble, Broadcom, Home Depot, Merck, Chevron, Abbey and America's largest big box retailer, Walmart. All companies that I'm sure you are very familiar with and have a presence within your everyday life. But performance is now key. Should you have invested that $10,000, not into SDY, but into VYM, well, you would now be sitting on $23,590 in one cent while also scoring more in dividends as VYM comes in with a strong dividend yield at 3.4%. Now, investors, you just got two out of the four dividend ETFs, and now I want to know if these insights are of value to you and it's what you're looking for that's all you have to do is tap on that thumbs up button for me it will let me know to keep making content just like this with that let's go ahead and break down every dividend investors favorite dividend etf the one the only the schwab us dividend equity etf ticker symbol schd which i almost feel like i don't really need to go into more detail about but who are we actually kidding Interestingly enough, there are in fact other dividend ETFs out there that outbeat SCHD. So let's just get to it here and jumping over to Schwab's site so we can get a little better of a look into this ETF. We can immediately see that according to the fund summary, that SCHD's objective is just to track as closely as possible for any and all fees and expenses, the total return of the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index. And with a major emphasis on fundamental strength relative to peers. Now, interestingly enough here, we have the Schwab team really sharing with us that it pairs nicely with other investments when they say SCHD can certainly be a nice complement in a diversified portfolio. And that it certainly can be. As we review the fund details to discover that it adds 104 stocks to your portfolio, totaling out to $48.5 in assets under management. Now let's dive a little bit deeper here into the makeup of SCHD to really appreciate its reliability factor, where we can then see that the fund is primarily made up of industrial sector investments, a common thread here if you haven't noticed, followed by healthcare gems, financial sector stocks, and consumer staple plays. Going a little deeper here into our due diligence, we're going to find that SCHD's top holdings come down to Verizon and Broadcom, which are the top two holdings, almost neck and neck, followed by Amgen, Coca-Cola, and Pepsi, Home Depot, Abvi, Merck, Texas Instruments, and the largest asset management firm in the world, BlackRock. All pretty much fail-safe investments, but what about SCHD? CHD's performance. I mean, after all, everyone is always raving about it. And that is because it truly is something to rave about over the longer period of time. If we went back 10 years ago and invested $10,000 into SCHD, we would have been able to trump our two previous dividend ETFs coming out now to $27,215.27, all while collecting a solid SCHD dividend coming in at a reliable yield of 3.78%. And honestly, given Schwab is now very competitive with Vanguard, at a lower cost here of just $6 per $10,000 invested, given the expense ratio at 0.06%. But investors, we do in fact have one 
dividend ETF here that more recently has just been producing stellar returns and outshining SCHD as we can see here in a comparison chart. Not just over the last year, but the last five years and really since the inception of both of these funds. But what are we looking at exactly here in blue? This dividend ETF should get more spotlight attention and it's the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, ticker symbol VIG. So let's go ahead and jump back over to Vanguard to explore the dividend powerhouse that we have here. Whereas we can see that this ETF was designed to track the performance of the S&P dividend stocks. But the key here is the dividend growth stocks of the index, placing the emphasis on large caps for safety, yet with some growth here in growing dividends. In other words, we're talking about stocks like Microsoft and Apple, which are the largest positions within the fund, followed by then the super safe healthcare behemoth, United Health, before getting, I guess, a little bit riskier with ExxonMobil, followed by JP Morgan, Visa, J&J, &J, Procter & Gamble, Broadcom, and MasterCard. All companies that I'm sure you've heard of and are, of course, leading their industry. But not all of them are considered great dividend investments given their lower yields. Again, though, this fund is focused on dividend growth over the longer period of time, which ultimately pays off, as we're going to see. However, just to get a granular view here, I want to go into the breakdown of this fund by sector. 22.4% worth of the holdings are tech, and that birds the beautiful growth that we're about to experience experience with this fund. It also gets safer then with larger stakes in the financial sector, healthcare, and consumer staples. All in, we're going to scroll back up here to uncover that VIG has 314 holdings that allow for it to produce over 9% your turns, at least year to date, but it's all about the performance record, right? So going back into the past 10 years ago, investing that $10,000 would now allow us to sit on $27,218.17. But I understand it's this dividend yield that comes in under 2% at 1.97% that may have you all a little bit worried. However, it's not about exactly chasing yield. It's about allowing that yield to grow over time. And at the end of the day, it's this fund that trumps all the other funds on today's list, all for the low Vanguard expense ratio of just 0.06%. That's $6 per $10,000 invested. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, which one of these funds is for me? Well, that's a great question, and it's really actually all going to depend on your investment preference, your passive income intentions, or your goals, and of course, who you are as an investor. But I'd certainly love to know which ETF caught your attention the most, or which ETF you're actually invested in. So go ahead, let me know down in the comments below. If you're looking for more dividend stock ideas or insights, you're definitely going to want to check this video out right here. However, before you click away, make sure you're subscribed so you never miss a single dividend stock idea.